run up to the edge of knowledge. It's like, okay, we know this works, and we've got studies about this, and then boom, the rest of it is folklore and tradition, <laughs> and you run right up to the edge. It was and still is pretty easy to help advance what we know about how to treat the brain. Brain science is so far behind the rest of medicine, and I got hooked into this idea that I can do a little bit of extra work and figure out something, and then the world is a little bit better. I got into trying to figure out how the brain works in the ultimate pursuit of new treatments. When I was a coming of age as a clinical doctor, we were starting to be able to image the brain and figure out function in the brain, not just what it looked like, but what parts did what. And so I said, I'm gonna become one of those people. Started off asking simple questions. What parts of the brain are involved in regulating emotion? When you're sad, what's happening? When you're depressed, what's happening? And so that was my first big questions. I happened to see this wave of circuits and stimulation early on. This idea of brain as circuits and then being able to push and pull them, the potential of non-invasive brain stimulation as treatment has been a primary focus throughout my career. It wasn't obvious actually early on in my career and actually was quite heretical. When I saw TMS, it resonated with me an entire approach of brain stimulation treatments that are going to be transforming almost all of our brain diseases in a non-invasive way. I could see, wow, this is the technology that can do this new thing. TMS stands for Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation. The basic idea is you take an electromagnet, copper wire that's insulated in a ball or round thing or a figure eight, and then you run very powerful electricity through it. Whenever there's electricity flowing through a wire, there's a magnetic field around it. Electrical impulses get stopped by resistors, wire, plastic, rubber, skin, skull. That stops electricity. But magnetic fields just flow unimpeded through space. So we create that magnetic field. It flows unimpeded through the skull. And there it encounters the brain and nerve cells. And so we induce an electrical current in those neurons right underneath the skull. So we're actually electrically stimulating the brain, and it's been a real game changer. What we've shown convincingly with TMS is that you can stimulate the prefrontal cortex, and over several weeks of treatment, you can get people undepressed. And if it works for depression, then it should work for other brain diseases where we understand the circuitry. And so now it's being tried out in the addictions, it's being tried out in anxiety disorders, I can say that at least for my career without BBRS support, I don't think that I would have had near the success that I have. I wrote grants about TMS and they were turned down, not funded. And so I really had no way to get a machine here. And I wrote a grant to the BBRF and got a junior investigator grant and that paid for the first machine here. This is the, the first TMS machine that I, um, I got when I came to Charleston and paid for by BBRF. That was one of the first in America, and uh, it still works. I still use it to teach students. BBRF gets it right, in my opinion, where they focus the money on young people with innovative ideas, and that is the oxygen that helps science grow. This idea of who's priming the pump, who's uh, growing the next generation, the innovative ideas, that's exactly what BBRF does, and that's why I'm so grateful to them for me. They did it with me. Transcranial magnetic stimulation is non-invasive and highly effective. Now, I'd like you to meet Dr. Helen Mayberg, who's an expert in brain mapping and deep brain stimulation. Dr. Mayberg is a pioneer at implanting tiny electrical devices in specific areas of the brain to effectively treat severe mental health disorders. We interview Dr. Mayberg and the next two research scientists for the TV program, Healthy Minds, that's produced by BBRF and broadcast nationally on public television stations. It's also on the BBRF website. Dr. Mayberg received her first BBRF Young Investigator grant in 1991. We actually conceptualized the brain as regions talking to each other. 
and that the brain is organized, not just cell to cell, but region to region. The brain is literally, regions are wired to each other. They're communication channels. And a vernacular we use is that they're brain circuits. So one can have lots of definitions, but I think for thinking about deep brain stimulation, we're not just stimulating a spot, but we're actually stimulating that spot and everything it's connected to. And just like an electrical grid, or just like um, the communication system across the world, um, the roadways, we can conceptualize the internet, we can conceptualize communication between remote areas, and the brain works that way too. So you are able to stimulate a specific spot in the brain, and with knowledge of how the brain works, know where that's gonna then go to in terms of stimulating other parts of the brain. In theory, exactly correct. And I think all of this, this whole technology, and really catalyzing its use for really severe psychiatric disorders has been the knowledge that's evolved over the last 20 years to actually map the brain, identify blobs in the brain that are too active, underactive, but more to appreciate that those areas of dysfunction work together. That one area may be abnormal, but it's having influence on its neighbor, both next door and across town, so to speak, in the brain. And that the brain is organized as modules, and that things don't happen in just one area of the brain. They affect remote areas of the brain as well. Unlocking the mechanisms and neuropathways of the brain will continue to lead to important new breakthroughs in the treatment of mental health disorders. Dr. Carl Dyseroff at Stanford is shining new light on those neural networks, literally. He has pioneered the implantation of light-sensitive microbial genetic material in targeted areas of the brain that can influence behavior. Dr. Dyseroff received the coveted Albert Lasker Basic Medical Research Award in 2021. BBRF gave Dr. Dyseroff his first BBRF Young Investigator grant in 2005. Everything you can imagine has, has now been uh, studied. Uh, primary survival drives, the, the motivations that are so powerful in animals and that, that can go wrong in psychiatric disease. Uh, uh, aggression, uh, parenting, hunger, thirst, social interaction, motivation to overcome uh, challenge. Uh, all these basic uh, uh, functions of survival for the, for the animal brain. We now, using optogenetics, we know the precise patterns of activity that uh, can cause or turn off these uh, sensations, cognitions, and actions. And we can see how they can go uh, awry in disease models. And so everything from anxiety to depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, the circuits involved in schizophrenia, and circuits involved in, in autism, all of these have now been studied with this millisecond precision of light and the cellular resolution that optogenetics uh, provides. What is very clear is that adding or removing a few blips of electrical activity in a few very well-defined cells can and does instantaneously change the actions chosen by an animal. It reshapes their priorities, reshapes the choices that are made in the moment. And that can no longer be denied. We know this with, with incredible precision. Um, and so it's, it's an important um, state for us to be in. We know exactly how many cells can be involved and, and how many blips of activity in those cells. Our knowledge of brain circuits and neuropathways is opening new and better treatments of mental disorders. What if we could discover how a person's genetics influence their brain development and could use that information to target specific treatments for any mental disorder they might have now or in the future? Dr. Kristen Brennan is pioneering the use of stem cells to replicate how our brains develop. She received her first BBRF Young Investigator Grant in 2012. We can actually take skin or blood or any cell type uh, from patients and controls and use that to generate every cell type in the human body. And they're genetically identical to the cells that the patient was born with. So for example, 
we don't all have identical twins walking around that we can abuse in any way that we want for our experimental design. So I cannot take two identical people, treat one one way and one another and ask, what the impact that was. But in the lab, I can do exactly that. I can make neurons from one person, split them in half, and treat them differently. And I can exactly see how the impact of that treatment, whether that's drug exposure, whether that's inflammatory cues, how that impacts the function of the cells in the dish. The goal is really precision medicine. I think best practice right now really seems to involve, try this drug, report back. Do you feel better or do you feel worse? Um, but what if in the lab we could test a hundred drugs, a thousand drugs, a hundred thousand drugs on neurons identical to those in the patients all at once? And we could report back in three weeks that these are the five drugs that we think are best. Um, I think you could spare patients a lot of uh, adverse side effects by avoiding drugs that don't help them. And you could do a lot of good by getting them on drugs that do help a lot sooner in the disease. With stem cells, we can now generate all of the cell types that comprise the brain. And we can do that across any person on the planet. In its most simplest forms, what that means is I can take a skin sample from any healthy control and from any patient, uh, reprogram those into stem cells, and then direct those stem cells to become neurons. I can ask how the neurons from patients function differently than those of controls. I can begin to ask why those neurons function differently with the ultimate goal of finding ways to restore normal function, screen for new drugs and therapeutics to help uh, patient-derived neurons act more like those in uh, the healthy controls.